changed a lot. I think the, the Asian players have gotten a lot better and uh, now because of all the information that's available with the different uh, teaching schools and things that are available now, different uh, ways of learning that are out there. You know, with Paul's teaching site, I think that everyone's catching up. So people nowadays definitely they, you know beginners improve faster. You know, it makes it a little bit harder, you know, not as easy as before to make money. I think beginners kind of have a certain uh, selection of hands in their mind that they want to play and they kind of just kind of stick with that. But again, you got to remember, beginners are usually playing against other beginners. So uh, the strategy is a little bit different. Well, yeah, yeah, it's practice. You start learning which hands you could play, which positions, which hands you could bluff with, um, which hands you should call with. Um, you know, it's kind of like a lot of it's uh, trial and error in the beginning. Uh, for me, it was because, again, I didn't have schools. I didn't have uh, teaching sites. I didn't have uh, different tools that I could, I could learn from. So now I think it's a big advantage for uh, people coming up nowadays that they have schools that they can learn from, where they can learn which starting hands not to play, uh, which uh, certain different pre free flop strategies, you know, things like that. Pre flop it depends on the structure of the games, you know, whether there's NTs involved, whether there's trader involved, you know, you play differently to every structures pre flop, you know. How much debt money is there? Is it worth you know, putting in a bluff to, to steal how much? You know? All these factors, I think, is very important. And also, like pre-flop, whether to 3-bet or 4-bet a person, it, like I said before, is more to which type of players are you playing against, aggressive or tight? I think, first and foremost, they have to be comfortable they have to, if they want to up their ante, you know, uh, how many buy-ins can they afford to lose. I mean, it's a matter of a, more of a risk and money management thing. Yeah, another thing is I think that they have to be winning players at that level that they're playing with at, at already. Yes. I mean, if they're not winning at that level, then they shouldn't move up to the next level. Yes, definitely. To up the ante in certain games, how much of a favorite are you? You know, what are your chances of winning in that game? It, it all plays, comes into play. I, I, I enjoy it. I like playing it. It's fun, it's something different, it's new. And, um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of gambling involved. Uh, the equities uh, run play pretty close. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to get your money in the middle and be 50-50 or some, somewhere near that. It, it suits a more gambling style player. Oh, Phil is like, for me, he's like a non-steamer, you know. He, he doesn't get tilted much, you know. He'll play his normal game even when he's losing, and losing big even. That's one of, I think, one of Phil's greatest attribute. Phil is like, you know, a, a, Someone that I try to, to model some of my play around him, you know. <laughs>